Well, most gardeners have many flowers and shrubs and trees in their gardens, many of which come from elsewhere, but this is not always the best thing, as we'll learn today from a book we have, Bringing Nature Home, How You Can Sustain Wildlife with Native Plants. And we're fortunate to have the author with us, Doug Tallamy from the University of Delaware. Thank you so much, Doug, for sharing a few Happy minutes with us. Happy to be here. Well, tell us a little bit more about the book. Uh, we know the title. Um, uh, the, the book covers a number of topics. The most important one, though, is, is to convince people that pan plants matter. Um, we, have, we have viewed one important part of what plants do, and that is that they're pretty. We treat them as decorations, but we've forgotten all the ecological functions that they have. Uh, and everywhere we manage our landscapes, we have forgotten that. And now it's such a huge area that uh, we're suffering from the lack of the ecosystem services that these plants provide. Um, this book focuses on one of those ecosystem services, the ability to maintain food webs so that other living things can, can uh, continue to exist. We, you know, we have a real drain on our biodiversity in this country because we're taking away habitat. And now the only way we're going to save these species is to share the spaces where we live and we work uh, and to a lesser extent where we farm. So this book talks about the relationships between plants, um, how they capture energy from the sun, pass it on to, to other organisms, how insects are a very important component of that, uh, which is another piece of news for most gardeners. We see insects as, as the enemy. We've got to kill them all the time. But uh, we will not exist as, as human beings on this planet if we get rid of all of our insects. So uh, we need to plant plants that the insects can use so that other things can eat those insects so that we have the other things around. Great. So it sounds like a pretty uh, big topic and a lot, but why, uh, I guess, aren't all these plants the beautiful plants we bring in? Why, why are native plants more important? Um, well, that's that, that's that insect connection again. Let me give you one quick example. Uh, if you want chickadees in your backyard, if you want them to reproduce in your yard, it takes 4,800 caterpillars to feed one clutch of chickadees through to maturity, 4,800 caterpillars. So you've got to make those caterpillars in your yard. What are the caterpillars eating? They're eating the plants that they co-evolved with. Uh, and, and most species of caterpillars, 90% of them are really specific about what they can eat. So if we bring in plants from, from Asia, our caterpillars can't eat those which means you're not going to get your 4,800 caterpillars and you won't have chickadees, and that's just one species of bird. 96% of our birds are feeding their young insects, mostly caterpillars, so if we want birds around, we've got to change the way we landscape with, with the bulk of our plants, the big, particularly the big woodies. Okay, so not, not just the flowers, but the, but the shrubs and trees as well. Yeah, that is where most of those caterpillars are developing, yeah. Hmm. So it sounds like fascinating. I'm sure there's just lots more in this. What uh, brought this uh, to mind? Why did you feel compelled to and, and write this? I know you're doing some research on this area. Right. Uh, well, I, I am an entomologist, and, and I have studied how insects interact with plants uh, for a number of years. But what really stimulated this was that we, my wife and I moved to a new house, uh, more or less in the country. It's now surrounded by suburbia. but. It had been mowed for hay, and by the time we moved in, it was overrun with, with invasive species. So autumn olive and, and uh, oriental bittersweet and multiflora rose, Japanese honeysuckle, and so on. And these are all plants from Asia. And the first thing I noticed in my yard is that uh, none of our local insects were able to eat those. Um, we started doing research on this. Uh, the news media picked it up, and people started to invite me to give talks, and then people said, we want to read about this, and I said, there's nothing to read, so finally I said <laughs> I'd write a pamphlet, and the pamphlet became the book, and that's how it is. <laughs> great, I know it's very successful too, and I know uh, there's some great pictures in here of a lot of di some of these different insects and caterpillars you're talking about, and I guess there's probably some good, it looks like a nice table here, some good take-home information for gardeners too. Mm -hmm. We have some plant lists for every part of the country about um, what are some of the, the um, um, the best, most productive plants. One, one last thing to leave you with, native is not the issue here, it's productivity, because there are native plants that are very poor at supporting food webs too, so we want to focus on the plants that are good at doing that. Uh, and, and that's really just a subset of, of all of the natives that so are it's around. not just a black and white it's native not black and white, it's no. just yeah. how, you know, what they can produce for the insects and exactly. the good stuff in here right. on that. Right. A lot of great lists. I look forward to looking at it and uh, thank you so much for sharing a little bit about it with us and I hope our viewers can take some time and uh, get up to speed on this as well. well. You're welcome. Thanks for the invitation. For University of Vermont Extension, I'm Leonard Perry.